All right, so you're going to need a few different things for this class. A lot of which you're going to be able to find around the house. We're even going to talk about making your own tools out of different found metals. But there are a couple of things that you're going to want to purchase. In particular, locks. You're going to need a few locks to practice on. So just go out, pick up something inexpensive, something that you don't have to worry about if you break or whatever the case may be. If you have some used locks laying around the house, that would be great. Uh, you know, if some friends have changed the locks out recently, try to get their old ones. Um, eBay is a great resource, but it might take longer than you want it to. Um, reuse zones or, or any sort of uh, donation hardware place where people donate old hardware and you can go and pick it up cheap. Those work great as well. So go out, pick up a couple of basic pin tumbler locks. Um, hopefully something that you can disassemble would be nice. Make sure that it's something that you can access. If you have a padlock or something, that's fine. The disassembly will still be good to watch, even though you won't be able to carry it out. But uh, yeah, just get some locks is the important thing. Okay, additionally, it's nice to have a vise. Uh, I got this guy for like $16. It doesn't have to be particularly good because we're not going to put a ton of pressure on it. Just something small. Um, you don't need a vise, it's just going to make it easier to do certain things, and in particular for picking. I do a lot of my picking lock in hand, but for most of these lessons I'll be picking in a vise. Some tweezers. So I have some really nice tweezers that are meant to grip pins specifically. I'll be using these throughout the video. You can use tweezers of just about any sort for most of what we're going to be using them for. So if you have some tweezers laying around the house, go dig them out. It'll be really helpful. Picks. Again, we're going to cover how to make picks, and we'll talk about the different materials you can make picks out of. But there's all sorts of metal that you can use to make your own tools. However, if you have access to some lock picks, that would be great too. I don't have any specific lockpick recommendations for, for you. I'll cover some things to look out for and some things not to look out for, but I'm not going to tell you to buy a specific brand of picks or from a specific person because hopefully these videos will be seen by a somewhat international audience who will all have different needs and different people that they can go to to get tools. But I'll at least explain what to look out for. Finally, a little cardboard. If you want some corrugated cardboard, you'll see why in a minute. But just grab a couple of pieces, something, you know, around this size would be particularly ideal. We're going to cut it down to about there when we're using it, but, man, cardboard is going to be a lifesaver. Oh, and lastly, something called a plug follower. This is what I'll be using. It's a small white piece of plastic. It's a half inch in uh, diameter. That's important. Most locks will take a half inch plug. And you know what happens to fit a half inch plug perfectly? The cap of a Sharpie. Just pull this guy off, and the rest of this is going to fit in your lock perfectly. So there's all sorts of stuff around your house that'll be a half inch in diameter that you can use for this purpose. You'll see what it's for in a bit, but I'll be using this little white one. Okay, if you can gather those materials together, you can continue on with the rest of the course. I'll see you in a minute.